this has been uh, a challenge from the beginning, but uh, we finally have been able to hook up. So for the audience, um, Bill's uh, is not being able to hear us with his speakers. So we're using the phone and we're speaking into our phone. He's being able to hear us through his phone. So anyway, here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we yeah. are. All right, so introduce yourself. Well, my name is Bill Larrabee. I live in a little town in New York State called Pulaski, which for most people is pronounced Pulaski, but the old guy came through here and the people decided that's how they were going to pronounce it. So there we are. Uh, we're a very small community. There's probably 2,500 people, and maybe give or take a person or two. And uh, we're located just about 30 miles north of Syracuse, New York. And we're right off the eastern edge of Lake Ontario, which doesn't always treat us with any respect, especially in the winter time. <laughs> we might go to bed and the grass is green and get up and it's four feet of snow on the ground. So, you know, that's just the way we live. Yeah. So today, uh, at this late stage of the month of June, it's been rather cold. Wow. Uh, I got up this morning, it was about 50. So oh it's, my gosh. And it's just about 62 now, so we haven't gained a lot, but it's better than 50. So, um, I was born and raised in this town, and I graduated from high school in this town. And my dad was the uh, part owner of the Ford Garage for over 40 years, so I've obviously I've been quite well known. Um, my life, as far as a short term of it, I when I left here, I um, went to Embry Riddle in Daytona Beach and I learned how to fly airplanes. Unfortunately, I ran out of money and I couldn't finish the course, so I never got a license. Oh, gosh. But I flew quite a few trips across Florida and back because my grandfather lived on the other side of, of the state, so I at least had a place to go. Yeah. When I came back here, I worked for my dad for a while and then I went into the Naval Reserve and uh, I traveled from here to Africa in 1968 and uh, we traveled to, um, well, I think it was like five or six ports that we landed on on the west coast of Africa and then we sailed to the east coast went to Mozambique and then from there we went to the Persian Gulf where all the activity is now yeah. but at that time nobody knew where we were we were at Bahrain Island never heard of it now everybody knows where it is so I spent seven and a half months there and then I came back and the rest of the time we were just pretty much right here on the coast of the country. So I met my wife when I was uh, serving and we just celebrated our 50 years back in November. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank, thank you. Yes, it was. And we've been extremely happy. We've got two sons. Uh, one my oldest son uh, works for the New York Air Brake, which is the company that makes the brakes for all the trains all over the world. Huh. And he, uh, he's a, I don't exactly know what his job is. I know it's an engineering type job, but he's not a, an engineer. He's more of the, the uh, business side of it. Uh, he has a master's in business. And uh, my youngest son, has gradu graduated from St. Lawrence University, which is the university where Kirk Douglas graduated from. My favorite and, uh, of all time. Yes, and uh, he is a state trooper for the state of New York, and he has five daughters. Oh, wow. Gosh. So he has to live in a house with six women. <laughs> what a guy. Lucky man. And this Friday, in fact, we're going up to, uh, we're, it's about two hour drive from here to uh, uh, Canton. And we're going to go up there and visit to celebrate our third granddaughter graduating from high school. And then she's going to St. Lawrence. So everybody in the family so far has gone to St. Lawrence. So, and uh, then the other two girls we're not sure about yet, but we'll see what happens. And, uh, and then, of course, Brooke will graduate Saturday. We'll, we'll make the trip both ways. It's two hours up and two hours back, but, you know, it's worth it. Yeah. So that's about it. I'm, I'm taking care of my wife as much as I can. She's partially crippled, and so she needs help. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, we do the best we can in this old house. 
yeah. that we've had since 1973 or whatever it was. Wow. So that's about it. So it's not uh, bad. I noticed that your, and this is completely unrelated, but I noticed that your your moniker when it came up before your picture on came up, it said Fire Chief. Yep. Were you in the uh, the fire department? I'm assuming. I have 33, 33 years of fire service. I've served two fire companies and a fire brigade. Wow. And I was chief of one of them. Yeah. An assistant chief in, one of, in the fire brigade, I was assistant chief. And uh, so that's been pretty much my fire ground background. And I've still got my hands in it a little bit from time to time. But, but at 74, I'm not going out there at night and fight fires anymore. Yeah. I don't blame you. No, that's too much. Got a, too much. got other stuff to do. So tell us well, about about how you kind of found us, or you know what your uh, are you making signs? Kind of how that whole thing happened. Well, to begin with, I when I finally got to where well, to begin with, my youngest no, it's actually my oldest son uh, got a cell phone for mother and I and. Uh, when we got that, we started finding out there's things on there that uh, you can have a good time with. And it turns out YouTube was one of them. Yeah. And I was going through <clears throat> YouTube, and this is going back a couple, three years now. And I just happened to come across your your site, so I watched it. And uh, at that point, I think your dad was still on with you. Yeah. And so the, both of you were doing the, the show, and I got to watch it, and I got to thinking, well, geez, I got three or four routers of my own, I ought to try it. Yeah. So um, I did. I, I was just going to show you today my first sign. Do you think I can find it? <laughs> no. And and the funny part of it was, it was a sign that was, it was called, the name on it was Poochie. And I did it with the, the dimpled background like you like and everything. And it was done because my wife had a fish in a bowl. And that's what she named it. So I made her a sign. Well, now I can't find it. So, and the fish is gone. So, <laughs> but you know, I've, I've done some different things. You've, you've got a couple of my pictures and, uh, yep. and uh, so, and I'm going to show you something in a few minutes and I, I don't know how many years it's been since you've seen one, but I'm going to show you, but I've done other things too. Um, I'm, I have a shopsmith oh. and I know your dad was, was supportive with shopsmith Way and uh, I, and I have a duplicator that goes on it to make spindles. Yep. And if you uh, if you ever decide to look up my house, you can look it up on the Google Maps, and you'll see our front porch is all spindles. Well, except for three of them, I made all of them. Wow. <clears throat> and they are from the 1908 design when the house was built. And uh, so when I bought that duplicator, it was, had quite a bit of use out of it. But I found out. Because inside the house, everything's, what's going on? Oh, we hit, I'm sorry, I hit the speakerphone button. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, inside the house, everything was trimmed in oak when we got it. Uh -huh. And uh, some of it had kind of been deteriorated over the years, hadn't been taken care of very well. And we had to do a lot of remodeling in the house anyway. So what I ended up doing is trying to figure out how to make rosettes mm -hmm. and what I and this will give you some idea of what the rope can you see it uh, a little bit more oh, there we yeah go. yep okay that's the 1908 design rosette okay all right that's the 2009 copy of the rosette okay very cool wow yeah, yeah. and I and I did that plus the base blocks they used to call uh, down at the bottom of the molding along the door, there's a thing down at the bottom. It's decorated. They call it base block. I made those out of a, a piece of uh, oak, and I used the bandsaw for that. Yeah. So I've I've done that, and uh, so those rosettes were done uh, with the shopsmith. Then the duplicator on the shopsmith. The one I showed you, yes. Yeah. 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 Now I don't know how they did them back in 1908, but I'm sure they had some idea of how to do it that way. Yeah. So that's what I do. I do duplications and I make things and whatever. And when I got into doing the signs, uh, actually, I, <laughs> I've got one sign that I don't have that I can't show you because it's on the house next door. Uh -huh. <laughs> the get, well, the, the lady that's remodeling the house, 
she didn't have a uh, sign on the door that said what the number was. Oh. So I said to her, I said, well, I'll take care of that. So I went downstairs and I began to do my carving and sure enough, up came the number and on the house it went. Yeah. So, so that's another idea people can do if they can get in the business of making house numbers, mm -hmm. you know, building numbers, whatever. Yeah. So that's one thing I've done. And, but I haven't really done a lot because, well, I got to take care of Kathy and I've got to do a lot of other things too. And yeah. so I, I'm, I go down when I can because I'm in the cellar and in the wintertime, it's brutal down there. Yeah. I haven't got my heater in there yet that I wanted to put in. And my son says, we'll get one in for you, Dad. Well, you missed this winter. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure, uh, make sure he sees this video then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm curious, Bill, you said you've got like four or five routers. Um, what kind of routers do you have and which one is your favorite? Well, to begin with, they're they're not new ones. Uh, I have two Black & Deckers, oh, and I have a Sears model, oh, and I have the little one that you get at um, Harbor Freight. The drill, well, drill, drill, master. drill master? Yeah, the, yeah, for the drill master, and I, and I started my carving with that. The only thing that I regret about that is that you can't take the plastic off the back of it. Yeah. And so you can't see all the way through, and it just makes it hard to carve. So, yeah. what I'm going to show you now that you brought it up. Okay. How long has it been since you've seen one of these? Oh my gosh! Is that a, is that a craftsman? I, is, no. Okay. I don't know if I can get close enough for you to see, but there's a glare on, there's it. A glare on it. Uh, spin it just a little bit. Uh, well. <laughs> what, why don't I just tell you? I don't this think is I've a ever black, seen one of those. This is a Black & Decker Firestorm. I've Firestorm, never, and I'll tell you, and it weighs 16 ounces to the pound, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, what I like about it is that it has, at the very top of the router, it has a plug-in for vacuuming. Okay. But the vacuuming comes out, comes from the base. Okay. And the other beauty about it is, you know, how you're opening up the back of some of the routers. Yeah. This thing is opened all the way around. Yeah. Wow. And the vacuum, as you as you carve a sign with it, the vacuum takes care of all the sawdust. There is none. And, and, and is, it, is it a um, like a little applique thing that that clips to the back open hole? Is that how it extracts it? No, actually, what they did is they molded the vacuum hose into the router uh, base itself and the body. Wow. And they put the hole for the vacuuming at, in the base, so it's right down on the table. Oh, wow. And then you just plug a hose into it and go. And I'll tell you, I've, it's as heavy as it is. It's awkward to a certain extent, but it carves well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can set... Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know. That was something that my wife bought me, I don't know how many years ago, and because I really didn't find a good use for it, this is basically a brand new router that's just now getting started. Wow. So, looks, and they don't make them. Yeah, it, it looks like it's pretty new. I'm going to have to look that up because I've never seen one of those. Well, it's, um, just look. It's Firestorm. Firestorm. And it's, it's made by Craftsman? No, Black and Decker. Oh, Black and Decker. Okay. Yep. Black and. And Decker. like I said, this thing is heavy. This, in fact, I'm not sure. Maybe it would work if I put a base on it, one of yeah. yours. Um, but the fact is, it is so wide the way it is now. The base would be wider. Yeah. It might be a little too much. It might be all right for a big sign. Yeah. The 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 interesting thing on that though is that generally like that, a lot of uh, like the Craftsman routers, the handles are not removable. They're molded in to the shape of the router. And that's what that looks like. And if, if that almost looks like, it, is it got the switch in the handle? Like wired uh, yep. right, in, right into the handle, right? Yep, there is a switch in the handle. Yeah, so, so those handles aren't removable. A lot of big routers, most, not the Craftsman, but a lot of the Bosch's and the different ones, you can literally remove the handles 
that then our, our big base plate works really well. That might now the only way that I can think that a base plate would work on that is if you got one of the 12 by 12s. Like you say, if you're making a big sign and got one of the 12 by 12s, because then the handles are out far enough that they're not going to be restricted by the handles on that you can't take off. Yeah, I absolutely agreed on that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. I'm, I'm about to start something here, not right today, obviously, but uh, I have a thing called a router crafter. Have you ever heard of that? I can't say as I have. Well, what it is, is something that Sears made years ago, and it's four tubes, and on top of there is a base plate for a router to sit on, okay. and it's adjustable up and down, and you put a piece of wood inside those four tubes, and you use the router to make spindles, and you turn a crank to make it work. So, it's so I'll, send, I'll send you a picture of it. Yeah, it makes it, it turns a router into like a lathe. Then. Yeah. Like hand crank yeah. lathe. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, but, Sounds like something Izzy Swan would make. Well, you'd have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. You could make candle holders. You can make spindles for whatever you want to make. And, and there's so many combinations on this thing that, that you'd never use them all. Wow. That, yeah, yeah, send me, I, I would love to see some pictures of that. I will, I will take care of that. And I've got my Sears router mounted onto it, so you'll right. get the whole thing. Yeah. So. Terrific. Good, good, yeah. good. So what, so, it, so, um, so you, uh, you only really made what, maybe a dozen signs? Uh, not that many. I, 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 other than the ones I practiced on, I probably haven't done any more than about eight of them, but um, yeah. I'm kind of slow at it, you know, and yeah. and uh, I'm trying to be real careful and not mess up everything, but it's kind of hard when you're not used to it. <laughs> well, you know, you've got other things going on too, so it's not yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's but, cool. But, but I've, I've made a little made a little shop downstairs and I've got, you know, a little table set up so that I can carve on it. It's actually a workmate bench and uh, I got a chair there and I just, you know, work with that. But, uh, yeah. but you know, there's so little space down there and I, and now that we're getting into this weather, you know, hopefully I can get out and do some outside where I can actually sit there and be comfortable. I've got a, I got a uh, portable uh, work table that you can take out and open it up and I can yeah. sit there do that so yeah and and if you're down in the basement then uh dust collection is definitely an issue right i mean so that that's where that firestorm if you could make that work to have dust extraction like i carve outside almost well almost all the time so yeah. it's just not an issue for me but there's a lot of people that are either in an apartment or in a house in a bedroom mm -hmm. or in a basement yep. where dust extraction really becomes an issue yeah i have i have two I have the, the little vacuum cleaner that, in fact, they don't even make that model anymore, but I, that's what I plug into this. But I also have a big one with the big can, the big 55 gallon can or whatever it is, yeah. you know, and uh, I use that for my saws and, and anything else I use on the shopsmith. Yeah, that's so. what I was going to say. The shopsmith, if you're doing turning and those kinds uh -huh. of things, that's where you're really kicking out a lot of sawdust. You really have an issue that's uh, you know, probably 10, 15, 20 times more sawdust than carbon assigned. Those oh, yeah. really kick out chips. You betcha. And yeah. to the point where because of the size of the space that I have, I actually have to put a, it's an old shower curtain between the shop smiths and the hot water tank. Ah, yeah. But that's for my own safety. I mean, I don't yeah, need right. to have dust suddenly blast off and make the old fire chief look pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you know. <laughs> you've had some experience with that, I'm sure, yeah. Oh, uh, one or two. <laughs> so, oh, fortunately not my own, but, you know. Yeah. Right, right. So. Well, that's so. great. So, um, you know, I like your idea of, uh, of house numbers, making house number signs mm -hmm. as kind of a niche that I don't know that I've heard a lot of people. We, Dad and I, actually, way back when, we did those for, like, new housing developments and that. Mm -hmm. We would go to the, the, the people that were, build, the builders that were building, and they would buy 15, 20, 100 different signs from us. 
we would make up a little template and actually do house numbers uh, for the whole development, which is, um, but even one at a time uh, custom like you did for your neighbor, not a bad idea. That's a pretty nice niche that you could go after. Yep, and, and I've thought seriously of, of mouthing that around to see if anybody might need a sign because, you know, there's a few houses around here and the only reason that one got a sign was because she's remodeling the place and didn't have a sign for it. So right. that now, paid off. I'm curious, uh, you know, you, with your background, there's a lot of, uh, way back when, when we looked into it, there was a lot of communities like uh, emergency services, like fire department, police department, required a certain size number on houses in order, you know, for, you know, so you can find addresses. Do you guys have an ordinance like that in your town? I don't remember whether I, we did or not because, um, when they changed the numbers, when we went to the new 911 system, this is going back quite a few years ago, uh, the house numbers we had were totally different. Our house had a number of 7469. Now it's just 66. Oh, wow. And so, but they, but to my knowledge, what I did is I bought metal numbers yeah, right. that you could get at any hardware store. Right. And I just nailed them to a piece of, of white board and put that on the side of the house. and. Yeah. I guess it was acceptable because nobody ever told me it was the wrong size or anything. So yeah. so I can't really totally answer your question, but I do know that they have to be big enough to be seen from the road. Yeah, right, so. right, right. I know uh, we, we dealt with that because we made for a long time, and we still do, make individual cutout wooden numbers and letters. And most mm -hmm. of those, uh, in most cases, they were for addresses. And uh, a lot of ordinate, a lot of cities said, oh, they've got to be four inches or six inches or whatever, so emergency services can read them. Um, yeah. But that um, that is an interesting niche to go after. I think I think you could uh, develop a business even around that. Well, I'm going to give it a try. Good, good. Yep. Let us yeah. know how that goes. So, yep. is, there, is there any specific questions, any issues that you're having? that that i can answer for you um right at the moment off the top of my head i really can't think of anything and i'll probably think a bit about midnight tonight yeah so you know <laughs> yeah but still um how i guess you, not how are you finishing your signs uh, uh, you know for outside like your your neighbor's sign well, you well thanks to signs. frank thanks to frank i'm using halcyon there you go <laughs> there you go um, and so far, all I've done is brush it on, but it but it's great stuff, and yeah. and I can use that when I'm in the cellar because there's no odor to it. Right, it's water based. Yeah, yep. so I don't mind that. In fact, I'll probably stick to that unless I can get something done outside where I where I'm looking for something extra special. But but yeah. I, I'm satisfied with that for right now. Yeah. So yeah. What I'd kind of like to do is do what Vicky does and get into the to the resins. But uh, you, you, but I'm not I, to me right now. It's just a little bit off to the side. Yeah, I gotta wait a while until I can actually find a space in the cellar for yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. But well, uh, the neat thing about the total boat, and that's a total boat makes the halcyon. The total yeah. boat, um, most of their products are very uh, low VOCs or, not, low or, or none, or none, where you don't really have the you know, the odors and stuff, so you can do them inside. Yeah. Now, the only thing I haven't done with it, I haven't tried the critter on it yet. I've got one, but I, I haven't done that, so. Oh, you will love that critter when you when you get to using that. Again, you uh, you probably won't want to do that inside. You'll want to do that outside. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But the critter sprays that halcyon really, really well. Now, I watched Frank do it the other day, and he didn't, he said he took it straight. Does he really? Yeah, and see, with me, I tried it straight, and I didn't like the finish that it left. So then when I, uh, when I diluted it 20%, um, then it, it sprayed like, uh, I mean, like perfect. Um, hmm. So I don't know, maybe something to do with, uh, with, yeah, with weather or humidity. Frank's down on the coast, so maybe yeah. because of humidity, maybe that has something to do with it because we have like zero here. So maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know. Well, I don't know because we have days when when the humidity here is absolutely awful. I won't even go out. And then there's other days like today. It's cool. 
yeah. but it's not real you know it's dry basically yeah. yeah so yeah when you get a chance you'll like that critter sprayer that thing oh is so i'm sure hot. but i got to do something to, i got to do something about that compressor that i have it's a little pancake model uh I was wondering about, I asked my son about that, and he never really get, got back to me on it, but I was wondering, can you put an extra tank on that? I think there's a way to do that, to, um, you know, like put them in, uh, in connection and, and do them. Uh, I think there's a way to do that, but frankly, compressors just aren't that expensive anymore, so I just bought a bigger compressor. But yeah. I, I, I burned through a couple of those pancake compressors. Uh, they well, didn't quite have enough ongoing they, they were just running all the time yeah well that's why i asked because i heard you say that and i'm thinking well yeah. you know <laughs> then i gotta find another space <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think though i think you can there is a way to uh to hook another tank onto that i just don't know exactly how to do that yeah well i'm sure we'll come up with something as i'm i'm right now i'm not sure i need to worry about it for a couple yeah. more days but you know yeah. Right, so, right. But uh, yeah, that's probably the only thing I really be concerned about is is having enough pressure and long enough to do the job, you know. Yeah. So and then to have what happened to you is all of a sudden one day it quits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill, so, anything else I can answer for you? Well, not really. I, I, I'm, 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 I've been kind of lost here because of all the problems we started out with. So, um, but um, the only thing I think I, I, I mentioned to you, oh, this is going to go back a ways, but you were struggling when you were doing your videos with that cord on your, on your router. And I finally sent you a message that said, hang it over your head. Yeah. And you finally did. Well, and the funny thing is we used to do that way, way back when, we did that when we were out in the plastic shed. We did have an overhang because literally we were in a plastic shed and there, it was easy to do that. But then when, when I moved out to the patio, um, there wasn't, it wasn't real easy to figure that out. And um, anyway, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm glad you pushed me on that because that yep. kind of led to that. Now, now, of course, I've got a couple cordless routers which really make it nice from a filming standpoint, and the cordless routers really have gotten a lot better. The the uh, the quality of cordless routers really are have uh, have increased over the last few years. Yeah, well, you're the first thing I see in the morning when I get up. I turn on the iPad and I watch your videos before I do anything else. <clears throat> well, I appreciate that. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate well, that. I I want to learn, and if I don't watch, I don't learn. And you've been following us for quite a while, right? Oh, yeah. I can't tell you exactly how long, but it's longer than I need to talk about, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, there are times when, when you put a video out and I might not see it for a couple of days for some reason. Yeah. But generally, when I get up in the morning, I get up before Kathy does, and I'll just go downstairs and, <clears throat> and I'll just sit there with my cup of tea and watch you. Oh, my God. So, wow. I'm honored. Thank you, my friend. Well, I, I'm glad you are because I do appreciate you being there, both of you for that matter. So I've, I've become quite enamored with the whole thing. <laughs> well, terrific. Well, I think we're, uh, we're just about out of time. Yeah, yeah, we finally did get connected. I'm hoping that this phone thing, this is the first time we've done one with a picture and a phone. I'm yeah. hoping that this comes out because I think a lot of people would really like this. Oh, yeah. So huh. let, let me thank you uh, not only for joining us, but for your service uh, in the military and uh, obviously and the fire, as a firefighter. Thank you for keeping us safe, my friend. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you, and thank you for noticing. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I did enjoy it, and I put 12 years in the Navy, so it was all reserved, but yeah. except for the two years I was actually floating. But I served on four different ships at one time, so um, briefly on most of them. But the Dahlgren was my my big ship, and she's gone now. Yeah. So and the dirty D, dirty G, we called her. And you ended up right back where you started in the same little town you started. Yes, I did. I'm living in town, but when I was I was born in the town, but eventually my parents moved out in the country, and there's a state park there called Selkirk Shores. 
that was my backyard. Wow. What yeah. a thing to grow up. Yeah, until I moved away to go to college, that was that was home. So, all right, buddy. Well, we're gonna let you go. Thank you again so much. We sure appreciate you. Well, I certainly appreciate you guys being there. You have taught me a lot, and I appreciate your your talents. Well, I'm here. Anything we can do to help, you just let us know. I certainly will. All right, buddy. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. And you do the same Thank when you get to it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. bye.